How's everybody? Blessed. Are you blessed and highly flavored? Amen. Praise be to God. There's a wonderful presence of the Lord here if you're drinking and receiving. Oh, glory. Woohoo! Thank you, Master. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. God has already given us the power to choose. Ah, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven again and just ask for another drink. Nothing worse than a straight Christian. Hallelujah. We want to be drunk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to fill us, fill us, fill us, dress us, dress us, and possess us. We welcome fill us and overflow to be here today. So we can just float and swim. Saturate us today, Lord. Saturate us in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said amen? amen. Glory to God. Can everybody hear me? Amen. Okay. And Revelation 12, please. Uh, Revelation 12, verse 7. <laughs> You know, you really have to break through the soul to get, to get a drink. The soul is one of the barriers that block individuals from getting in. Because it always is maintaining the self-awareness. And we have to bust through that every time. That's why we worship. That's why we praise first. We praise to kill. So you praise to kill yourself. So that your flesh can get crucified and your soul can come submission under your spirit. Because your spirit so much wants to talk to your daddy and fellowship with him and hear what he's got to say. Amen. But everything else interferes. You know, there's multiple voices in your soul. Amen. And your flesh is constantly screaming, me, 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 me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your soul is always trying to tell you all about the things of the world. Things you miss, you things you should have done, and all the other stuff. Amen. But your spirit, man, is trying to kick the door. Slam open things that are of God. So we can be drink. We can be drink. So we can be <laughs> drunk. <laughs> we need to be drink. <laughs> Glory to God. Whew. I love when my dad shows up. Man, you get a kiss from heaven, it's over with. Amen. Whew. You don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Spirit. Revelation 12, verse 7. Is everybody there? Amen. Good. Let's speak this together because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you what? Become. Become. Amen. You speak light, you eat light. I love light. Light is meal. Amen. It's what we should be eating all the time. The more light you eat, the more you're bright. And war broke out where? In heaven, in the unseen realm. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. We've heard this over and over. How many know that you can read a scripture 50 times and find something new in it every time? So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, he's got many names, Amen. who deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving the whole world? Amen. You betcha. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast, were out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation, salvation. And the strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. So salvation, strength, and the kingdom of God could not come without the power of Christ. Everybody got it? Amen. 
For the accuser of our brethren, how many know the devil accuses you of everything? In fact, you constantly are battling that. You're constantly battling. You're being accused of everything. Your flesh is accusing you. Your soul is accusing you. The enemy will use everything and anything to accuse you. To bring guilt, condemnation, unforgiveness, bitterness, shame, whatever he can do. He's accusing you. But he says here, who, for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? He's been cast down. He's been dethroned. Everybody so, got it. The only way that he can become on the throne is if you let him. So it's our responsibility to keep him dethroned. And it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That means through repentance, you are cleansed by the blood. And the word of their testimony, well, the word of the testimony is the word of God, which is working in you, which is bringing you a testimony. And they did not love lo their lives to death. Now, there's the kicker. They didn't love their lives. In other words, they realized that they no longer have a life. It's his life. See, when you were born again, you gave up your life. This is where the battle is all the time. Because your soul and your flesh still want a life of the world. Until your spirit man is strong enough to say no and your soul gets converted. It's a constant battle. It's the battle over the wills. Your will or God's will. It's constant. It doesn't stop. So they didn't love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe, W-O-E, without eternity, to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down <laughs> to you, knowing, having great wrath because he knows his time is short. How many of y'all know his time is short? Amen. His time is short. We are looking for certain events to happen. The next... A feast that should be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets. That's associated with the rapture. That means the body of Christ is going to be removed. That means that the next event that must happen is the seven-year treaty must sign. But that treaty will be broke. And when that treaty is broken, the devil will expose. He will be known as the Antichrist. We are so close. That's why you're seeing such struggle right now in the Middle East because they're trying to bring peace, trying to bring peace. God has put his servant in office in the, in the United States so that he can bring peace to Israel and return the Lord. But there will be a time of prosperity and peace. And then it says suddenly, suddenly, so when the seven-year treaty is signed, you can expect three and a half years of prosperity and peace, but there'll still be deception behind closed doors. You'll still hear wars and rumors of wars. It'll be a false peace because the only peace can come through Jesus when he steps his feet on the earth. But he won't step his feet on the earth until the end of tribulation. And that's when he fulfills the Feast of Atonement and then the Feast of Tabernacles. But prior to that, he will come. And he will call all of the righteous ones that have passed. He'll bring with them. They'll get a glorified body. And you and I who are still alive will be taken up. And we will change in a twinkling of an eye with a glorified body. Praise God. You don't have to worry what you eat no more. Amen. Praise God. You'll have no more lustful desires. There will be no more goofiness. I'm telling you. Praise God. It will be a glorified day. <laughs> so we see here it's important that we get to understand that. You know, many people don't understand this. They don't even get it. They're still living their lives out of the soulish arena. Trying to fulfill their own empire and trying to fulfill their own desires and their own will. Never realizing then all of a sudden, God is going to come suddenly. And they're going to miss it. Because they're not doing his will. He will take those who are doing his will. 
not ours. Salvation strength in the kingdom of God. That is called his government. And the power of his eternal presence, power, his, his, his anointing, which is the power of Christ. It's, it's the eternal presence, power, and truth. It came through Jesus the Christ, who was the manifested word of God. Amen? He was the carrier. And now the power of Christ comes through the Holy Spirit. Has everybody got it? So, the greatest gift the Father gave to me and you was Jesus. The greatest gift Jesus gave to me and you through salvation is the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? But he first had to give us salvation first, which is the greatest miracle that there is. Salvation. That's to be salvaged. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And what did he, he, and through his spirit, he brings us independence. Everyone say independence. <laughs> independence from the devil, the world, self-independence, and puts us into a place of dependency on Christ. So we become independent from the world and dependent on Christ. Is everybody with me? Independence Day. Hallelujah. That is a day that you and I were liberated and freed from the world, from sin, from the power of darkness, from yourself, the old man. Amen? Because without Christ, that's why it says, but woe to those who are without Christ, there is deception, torment, bondage, and fear. That's why you and I have been called out of darkness into the light so we can continue to express all things according to Christ, not our own. But if we're still living for ourselves instead of for him, that's why everything must be first kingdom bound. Christ. If your thoughts are not according to kingdom bound first, then they're according to self first. Has everybody got it? In Psalm 96. Independence Day. The world celebrates Independence Day. So do you and I. <laughs> it's the day of your salvation. Hallelujah. Let's speak the first six verses. Everybody there? Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Every day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are where? In his sanctuary. Are you in his sanctuary? Are you his sanctuary? Yes. Amen. Hmm. Proclaim, celebrate the day of your independence, of your salvation into the eternal kingdom. It's a celebration. That's why we should constantly be joyful. Nothing should be moving you no matter what's going on. 241 years ago, on July 4, 1776, Continental Congress declared that the 13 American colonies as a new nation called the United States of America. That's 241 years ago. It's pretty wild, huh? It's only been 200. Uh, look, the United States has only been established 241 years ago. All for a purpose of the end time. What we were separated from so that no longer, uh, we, were, we were no longer part of the British Empire. No more British rule. But there was a de declaration of independence that was headed by Thomas Jefferson and John Adams 241 years ago. That hasn't, that's not that long ago, is it? 
That's why God, after all of the thousands of years, God established the United States 241 years ago. For what? To prepare for his return. See, he, 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 he originally stated it for Israel. But they rejected Jesus, so the United States came into effect. But he knew this was going to happen. That's why we have two arenas. The United States is associated with the spirit of liberty. The Holy Spirit. Israel is associated with Moses' law. Is everybody with me? Praise God. In Psalm 51. Hallelujah. 241 years ago. My Independence Day was uh, about 25 years ago. <laughs> I'm still celebrating it. Never forget it. Never, never lose sight of where I came from and what he's done. Because that's what keeps joy. See, in all things, an attitude is most important. If you have an attitude of gratitude to maintain that, the Holy Spirit wants to fill you, dress you, and possess you. Amen? There should be no bad days. Even your worst day is better than your worst day. Has everybody got it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 51 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions or my what? Sins. Amen. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned. That you may be found just when you speak. Oh. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. You and I were born in sin. Amen. And in sin, my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts that's in your soul. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. It's a wonderful thing, wisdom. You and I need it. I always look at wisdom as the Lord's kind of like the Lord's original wife. Because <laughs> he calls her. He calls wisdom her. It says wisdom was founded with, when the Lord was, he founded wisdom and all things he created through wisdom. Does everybody understand? Verse 7. Purge me with what? Hyssops and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy of gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. In other words, cleanse me. Don't look on this stuff. Get it rid of me. Verse 10, what does he say? Create. This is a heart desire, not a mind thought. This is not a mind prayer. This is a heart prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. See, the presence of God is vital. For you and I, it must be the number one important thing always is to carry the presence of God. We do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? Because in his presence is peace, joy, and righteousness. The presence of God is vital. I don't care how much word you know. The word's supposed to be bringing you to the presence, but unfortunately people read the word carnally and it does nothing but puff them up with knowledge instead of humble them. Amen. See, revelation should humble you. If it ain't humbling you, it ain't revelation. Oh, hallelujah. You should want to depart from evil. You should want to do everything that's pleasing to God. That should be a part of your Christian life.
because you know he loved you first and now you choose to love him. You want to live a life of pleasing God no matter what. Do not cast me away from your presence. That should be your vital, most important thing. Don't let me grieve the Holy Spirit. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the what? Joy of your salvation. That Independence Day. That day that I got saved. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will what? I'll teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you. See, you and I were at one time a slave to sin. We were bondage, deception, and fear. We were desiring to be liberated from the soulish self and demonic influence. We lived a life of independent, according to the way of the world. We are dependent on the world. But does everybody understand that? We are uh, walking in an independent spirit. I can do anything. Self-gods at one time. Independent lifestyle of the world. But now we've come independent, or we've become dependent on the Holy Spirit, His Word, His promises. And the joy of salvation must always be before me and you. Remember where you came from. No matter what you're going through. Remember where you came from. And are you heavenly bound or hell bound? Because your decision, it only takes one, one decision to move you out of position and set you hell bound. One wrong choice. But thank God for the Holy Spirit who kicks us in the butt, slaps us in the head, and brings people across our paths and say, get out of there. Wrong way. He puts red lights and stop signs in all of our ways. Just make sure you don't run them. 2 <laughs> Corinthians 3. <laughs> Gosh, you wonder how many times we ran over the Holy Spirit, you know? He's going, oh, stop! So, Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. <laughs> Let's speak it. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The blinders, the hardening of the heart. Now the Lord is the what? The Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is, there is liberty. There is freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Everyone say, I'm being transformed. I didn't say you were a transformer. You're being transformed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by who? The Spirit of the Lord. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the one who's transforming you. Why? Because, remember, Jesus carried, the, it was the, uh, Jesus carried the power of Christ. Amen? The Holy Spirit is the carrier of the power of Christ. Jesus was the power of Christ. Now that Jesus paid the price for me and you, the Holy Spirit is the power of Christ. But he's the distributor of the power of Christ in me and you. That's why we can say Christ in me is greater than he is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As a new creation in Christ, all things have passed away. All things have become new. But if you don't speak it, you don't eat it. Amen. And if you don't eat it, you don't become it. Amen? So we see here, they turn to the Lord. Turning to the Lord, that means we seek the kingdom and his righteousness. We also seek his counsel. We seek his correction. And we seek his direction. Then there's freedom. By obedience. Freedom does not come by disobedience. Freedom comes by obedience. In fact, you had to obey God's plan from the beginning. You could not get salvation without first repenting. Amen. You first had to repent. You were washed by the blood. The Holy Spirit had access to you. Because the blood always goes before the Spirit. 
Amen. So we see here, without cooperation, there is no freedom. So we see that there's a battle over the wills, isn't there? There's a battle over the will. The will of the soul, the will of the flesh, the will of self, and the will of God. Psalm 1. Independence Day. Uh, in verse 1, is everybody there? Amen. Psalm 1, 1, 1, and 1. Because he won. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or rebellious, nor does he, nor stands in the path of sinners or liars, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. <laughs> Those are haters. But his delight is in the law or of the truth of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So he's always putting the Lord before him and always comparing everything what he's doing he or she is doing with whether it's pleasing God or not. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Verse 3. He, what will happen? He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. In other words, it's constantly drinking. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither because it will never run dry. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. But the rebellious, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind dries away. Why? Because they're dry. They don't drink. Again, they can't drink. Sin prevents a person from drinking. Rebellion prevents a person from drinking. Until they are washed by the blood. But that must be out of the heart, not out of the mind. People repent because they got caught. But there's not a heart change. Things must come out of the heart, out of the spirit. There must be a heart change. Only when the heart begins to change can there begin a mind change. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, in other words, in the reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? So he's talking about the rebellious, blessed, refreshed, joyful, faithful, and prosperous are those who accept the counsel of the Lord. Amen? Why? Because they, re they reject. They reject uh, anything that's dry. They don't want, you don't want to associate anything that will bring dryness to your spirit. You don't want to associate with things. You don't want to look upon things. You don't want to even hear those things. You want to stay from everything away that will drain you. Somebody got that? Amen. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So those who reject the counsel of the Lord will stay dry. No matter how hard they try to get filled and refreshed, they cannot until they repent and turn. Does everybody understand that? Amen. Praise God. Well, because, you know, the soul will reject the spirit. Amen? And it will submit to the old man or the, or, or the flesh. But we want it to, because the spirit man is not strong enough to overcome the soul. So the only way for your spirit man to get strong is to eat and drink. Amen? And then as you begin to feed yourself with the word of God, your soul begins converted. It's a process and it's continuous. In Romans 6. Now let's go to 1 John first. You know, when that begins to happen, an individual begins to reject the spirit of the Lord and submit to the voice of deception. And again, they cannot get filled. They cannot get refreshed. That's why they run back to the world for fulfillment until they turn from what they were supposed to turn from from the beginning. Romans 6, 5. Is everybody there? Uh, 1 John.
Go ahead, lift your hands and get a drink. Why well, turn to first John? <laughs> first John something. Are you there? Chapter three. Verse seven. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. Now let me ask you this. If you are not filled with the Spirit of God, are you easily deceived? Yeah. You bet your sweet bippy. Whatever that is. I saw it on some flick one time. <laughs> I don't want to look it up either. <laughs> I don't know. What's your bippy? I don't know. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's called our, so when you, that's why he came. Amen. Whoever has been born of God does not allow sin to reign in him. He has dominion. His seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he is born of the Spirit of God with dominion, authority. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of the Lord, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Again, Jesus came to destroy the power of evil, rebellious of all evil rebellion and deception and to liberate those willing willing to reject their own will and do the will of the Lord. Somebody got it? To do what? So you must reject everything of you. And you must accept everything of him. Can we go to Romans 6 this time? The day of independence. That's the day of your salvation. Romans 6, verse 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are independent from the world, but dependent on Christ. Thank God. Romans 6, 5, let's speak it. For if we have been what? United together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, everyone say old man. Old man. Again, this is not your old boyfriend or your old husband or your new husband. This is the old man of self. And knowing this, that our old man was what? Crucified. So look at your old man as being crucified. With Christ, with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. He who has died has been freed. Now, I know dead people don't sin no more, amen? But you and I are to be dead to self so that we don't allow sin. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you won't allow sin to reign over you, amen? Praise God. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also, we shall live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin over once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, are you ready for this? Likewise, you also reckon, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. This is powerful. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its loss. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So you and I are alive from the dead because we walk in resurrection life. Because we were actually walk, we were zombies. We were the, the living dead. 
But now we're no longer dead. Death has no longer dominion over me and you. Does everybody understand that? Because we're dead to self. Even when we depart from this body, we ain't dead. We're just fulfilling life. The life of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. For sin shall not have dominion over you, verse 14. For you are not under the law, but under the plan of God, which is called grace. So we are under this grace, the plan. So we're to reckon ourselves dead. In other words, we are no longer independent, but dependent. Amen. Willing to submit to the overseers of our soul and equipping of our destiny, establishing accountability and credibility. I'm going to say that again. In this, God has placed us in places. Amen. So we want to reckon ourselves dead to no longer live independent, but dependent on Christ. So we are willing to submit to overseers that God places of our souls and equipment or equipping of our destiny, which is establishing an accountability and a credibility. This results in trust. How many of y'all want to earn the trust of God? Amen. Is he going to give you more if he can't trust you? No. This will bring divine order. Divine authority, divine nature. I also bring divine favor. When Independence Day of Salvation came, we were born again. <laughs> that means you and I lost the right to be our own gods. I'm going to say that again. The day you were born again, you lost the right to be your own God. Amen. You lost the right to be your own God. You lost the right to make your own decision. Amen. You lost that right. You gave it up. Why? You were purchased with a price. Is everybody okay? Yeah. James 4. See, when you're in fellowship with the Spirit, you will find out... Many of the decisions that you make are already established in you by the Holy Spirit. But uh, if your soul isn't converted, you're going to make a lot of emotional decisions instead of truth decisions. James chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Because most of the time, the first thing you think of, is the first decision that comes out or first thing that comes out is usually... Out of your soulish or flesh. That's why you have to take dominion of it. Because we have a tendency to want to react and not respond. So you must choke react. Amen. Amen. When you sense react, <coughs> grab Mr. and Mrs. React by the throat. And wait for response to come. Oh, hallelujah. And verse 1, James 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members. You lust and don't have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. For when you do ask, you what? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your soulish and fleshly desires. Instead of being kingdom business, your Self-aware business. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. How many of y'all want to be an enemy of God? Please don't raise your hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit who... Dwells in us, you're in jealousy. But he gives more grace, more of God's plan. Therefore, he said, God resists the proud, but he gives more of his plan, more of his grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will do what? Flee from you. A friend of the world. Association with becoming a friend of the world means you're a self-preservation. You're a survivalist. You're a survival mode. Self-preservation. You're in self-defense. And you're easily offended. Self-justification. 
self-righteousness, selfish ambitions, self-consciousness. And there's always a self-awareness. You're always thinking about you first. See, without the Spirit, there's no authority. Has everybody got it? That's why the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. With no, there's no, with, uh, 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 no authority without the Spirit. So people use what we call soul authority. And then they use intimidation, manipulation, exploitation, which is entitlement. They use all of these other things to try and get something because the Spirit is rejected. Has everybody got it? Romans 8. That's what you see happening all over the news these days. People are just living out of the soul because they have no spiritual authority. That's why you see all kinds of protesting, all kinds of stuff, manipulation, intimidations, all kinds of... They lie, they're doing all kinds of stuff. I've never seen so much fake news in my life. I've never seen so much media lie to try and get an agenda done. It's incredible to me. Like, there's nothing to it. You know, I remember all the stuff that I see now, people have been arrested for inciting riots. And you know, one of the things is I see more and more of us because these individuals have infiltrated because they're antichrist servants, all of our schools and colleges. And now they've infiltrated the governments. This has been going on for years. This hasn't just happened overnight. They've been planning this for years and decades because they knew they know at a specific time. They, look at Lucifer knows the feast of the Lord. He knows certain things must occur. He knows what time and season. And we just read it in the book of Revelation in chapter 4 that he knows his time is short. He knows that the United States is established by the hand of God. He knows what's going on. And he's doing everything that he can to stop and prevent. See, one of the things he wants to do is get you to reject Christ in you. Romans 8, 13. Is that what I said? That I said anything? Romans. Romans 8, 13 in verse 13. <laughs> Are you there yet? <laughs> Glory. Let's speak it. If you live according to the flesh or the world, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, sons and daughters of God. So you must be led by the Spirit of God. If you're not led by the Spirit of God, you're not considered a son or daughter of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness, bears witness. He bears witness in you all the time with our spirit. So the Holy Spirit's going to bear witness with your spirit because there's communion between your spirit and the Holy Spirit all the time. But without the soul being converted, you won't be able to interpret. Has everybody got it? The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. He's always telling you who you are. He's always trying to encourage us. And if children and heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. In other words, he's always trying to tell you about his promises and covenant. Does everybody get it? For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with which the glory which shall be revealed in us. If we're led by the Holy Spirit, we're new, uh, a newborn, again, spirit-filled Christian, son and daughter of God. We will be led by the Spirit. We will be guided by His Word. He will put things and cause us to do things. We must be willing at all times to deny ourselves and be willing to be led. Amen? So, in other words, a spiritual must always be first, not natural. 
Spiritual must always be first. So many times people move for jobs. Does everybody, I want you to grab hold of this. They look for, they're looking for a job, but they don't look for a, a place of fellowship first. That means the natural is first. If you're, if you're looking for a job, you better, if you're considering moving, you want to make sure that you find fellowship first. Well, that's spiritual. You want to be accountable. Amen? You don't want to be accountable, but you want to be fed. So people are looking for a job, but they should be looking for a place of fellowship first and then look for the job. God, look, when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he will always provide for you as long as you put him first, his will first, his desires first, and the spirit led. So if we were considering moving anywhere, we'd make sure that we were in fellowship somewhere first. And then associated with the job afterwards. Does everybody understand that? Amen. So the spirit must always be first, not the job. Amen? Not the family. Well, I'm going to move closer to my family. Was, why? Well, because now I'm closer to my family. Well, did God send you closer to your family or closer? Is there a fellowship there? Well, no, I haven't looked for a place of fellowship. Well, you're out of order. Amen. Somebody got it. You're out of order. There always should be spirit first. Always. If it isn't that, then there's out of order. And it will bring chaos, I can tell you that. Amen. So we want to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything, not natural first. In jobs, relationships, locations, fellowship at church, and so forth. Always first. First John chapter 2. Independence Day. That is the day of your salvation. You are independent from the world and dependent on Christ. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, he's an idiot. <laughs> the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Listen, when you're led by the Spirit, you're never anxious. There's no anxious. If you're living out of the soul, you'll find anxiousness all the time. That's not living out of the Spirit. Again, there are believers that have been around for 20, 30, 40 years and their soul still isn't converted yet. The world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God will what? In verse 17, abide forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Look at this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Why? They weren't of us. Because well, the soul wasn't converted yet. There was still too much. They were living out of the soul and not out of the spirit. It's different. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out of, that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. That means you, the Holy Spirit, is going to guide you. You will know what's what. If you're in the Spirit, if you're living in the Spirit, if you're walking in the Spirit, if you're being led by the Spirit, you will stop following the natural. You won't want to follow the natural. Now I want to close at Galatians 5. There must be a conscience effort all the time. That's why the word tells us that the enemy is seeking whom he, he may devour. The word to be sober and vigilant. So consistency is the key. Consistency. You must be consistent. Consistent in what? Feeding your spirit in fellowship. That's why the word says abide, abide, and abide. Abide. Galatians chapter 5. Somebody there? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom, liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be what? Entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And if I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. He said you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You were running well. You were doing good. You were walking in the Spirit. What caused you to go back into the soul or the flesh? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. But like I said, it just takes one false agreement with the enemy to start to set you off course. I have confidence in you and the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. But you, brethren, have been called to freedom and liberty. Only do not use this freedom or liberty as an opportunity for the flesh or the soul. But through love serve one another. For all, law, all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh or of the soul. Remember your independence day, the day of your salvation. Amen? Amen. And do whatever it takes. Stay dead. Reckon yourself dead to the old way, because you have been born by the Spirit for a new way. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We want to remind the Lord of the benefits. See, there are benefits with salvation. But see, he wants me and you to remind him. So we, that's why we decree. God knows his word. He won't come against his word. So Lord, we even decree right now, we remind you of your word that says the benefits of salvation is that you not only forgive our sins, you heal our diseases. You rescue us from a life of destruction. You crown us with loving, loving kindness and tender mercies. You renew our youth and you put good things in our mouth. You place us in heavenly places, spiritual blessings, seat us with Christ. And we are the righteousness of God. We're armed and dangerous and we're blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' name. Amen.